work on uh, our kind of first rotation of our coordinate system problem. Uh, and specifically, we're going to look at a scenario where we are looking at a stress tensor that looks like the one here. So when our, if we're looking at this type of coordinate system, x, y, actually, let's go ahead and let's use a different uh, kind of format here. So if I'm looking at a system like this, so if I'm looking at x, y, z, or let's actually go ahead and use this, or 1, 2, 3, as we've used in our previous notation, 1, 2, Three. So if I have a stress sensor that looks like this, where I have 22, 10, 6, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 megapascals, i.e. my cube looks like this. So I'm pulling out here in this direction, 22. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and actually, yeah, that is correct. We're pulling out here in this direction, uh, 10, and then I have basically a force going here and I'm going to be pointing in this direction so the normal piece of this is going to be our excuse me six right here and then I'm going to have single one two so some strain point right here here and there so that'll give me my again my sigma one two direction so and that's going to be equal to in this location, 6. Anyways, so now we need to figure out uh, in this problem statement, what is my uh, stress tensor at an angle of 30 degrees? So what is my new sigma x, x prime, sigma y, y prime, and my sigma x, y prime in this new coordinate system? Um, and we're going to look at that and solve it three different ways. And we also want to figure out what is our principal stress state, i.e. sigma 1, sigma 2, and what is our value when our when we are so this is when we're in max normal or only normal stress state i.e our stress tensor will look like this so what is this principal stress state so when i have sigma one sigma two and everything else is zero and then what is our maximum shear stress state so max shear where again we maximize this so this sigma max so then we'll, st we'll still might have some xx and some yys. Anyways, that's what we're going to be working with uh, in this problem. So let's rotate and first figure out what are our new stress values uh, at this 30 degree. So in order to do that, we need to look back and we're going to solve it the first way, kind of the most laborious way, this kind of static problem, where again, we were resolving stresses onto a certain plane and rotating our coordinate system some angle theta. And we basically came up with these expressions right here. Um, I wouldn't typically use these problems because, again, it's going to be difficult, or these um, equations, because it's going to be difficult to kind of think back and uh, what are going to be the stresses once we start to really work um, with some of these problems. Um, but again, it's a one idea or one way that you can kind of think about how to deal with some of these issues. So let's go ahead and I'm going to delete all this right here. Previously, let's go ahead and figure out what are those values of stresses at that uh, angle. So we want to do this 30 degrees counterclockwise rotation right here. So counterclockwise, we know that's going to be positive. So when we look at this value here, I'm going to just say that my sigma xx is going to be equal to 10, or actually 22 times 10 to the 6. My sigma yy is going to be equal to 10 times 10 to the 6 pascals. And my sig xy is going to be equal to 6 times 10 to the 6 pascals. So if I want to figure out what is the uh, kind of new stress, the sigma xx, sigma yy, in that uh, kind of notation, all I have to do is just basically use these expressions that we uh, developed previously. And so you can see kind of those values. Remember, um, this is my... Rotation matrix, we're going to get into that in a little bit, but uh, when you're using it with your cosine, you could just use it in kind of degree function here. So that's one way you can uh, solve some of these problems. Um, so if you want to plug in for degrees, you have to use this capital degree, basically using degree mode. So if I want to do, uh, let's see what my sigma xx prime, there it is as a function of theta. I just want to slash dot. Theta goes to 30, counterclockwise positive. Let me see the numerical result. So there's my new xx prime value. You do my yy the same way. 
And I can do also my shear stress as well, sigma x, y. That's it. So this would be my stress state, uh, the new stress state, my new sigma x, x, my y, y, and my x, y, right here. So that's excellent. Um, but now we need to figure out, okay, how, what are our, you know, we're looking for our, uh, we're going to use more circle, we're not going to use it actually this time. We're going to find our principal stress state. So our principal stress state is where our normal stresses are maximized. So we actually did that previously, uh, again in the notes, that if I want to calculate my principal stresses, I'm just going to differentiate, set it to equal to zero, and figure out what's the rotation to get to my principal stress state, i.e. when I have a stress tensor that looks like this. So I'm, I'm in my principal stress state when I only have normal stresses here. Again, and we're going to get into this in just a second. So I can solve and do the same kind of procedure here. So let's solve for what is that angle? So solve tan, tan two times, tan two times theta equals my set equal to sig xy divided by sig xx minus sig yy divided by two, then solve for theta. And then I could just take this expression out. So pi divided by 8 times 180 divided by pi. Let's get that numerically. So that's the rotation. That's the theta that will get me into, if I rotate, uh, basically, we'll, we'll see, again, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, depending on where you're uh, kind of looking at. Uh, this will give me the rotation that will get me into the principal stress state. And the principal stresses. Will just be this sigma one again just using the expressions i've already included that up here and you could share this notebook that one and sig two and that's it so uh, i can also calculate uh here and this are uh, in this problem where are my, where's my uh basically shear stress going to be maximized so if we look back at our equation here our tau actually let's look at it Here's our tau max right here. So I could figure out my, uh, so this would be again, the rotation to get to the principal stress state. And these would be my principal stress, sigma one, sigma two values um, in this kind of dimension. But you can see it's kind of difficult to kind of visualize and see like, is this a counterclockwise, is this a clockwise rotation? And also I can tell you what the value is. If I want to find my maximum shear state, I can tell you that it's this you know, sig x, y max. Actually, let's see if it's, how did I write that? So if I want to figure out, actually, yeah. So if I want to figure out my, oh yeah, sig y max. I could just find that value here. So this would be my maximum value of shear stresses, but I don't know the rotation necessarily, uh, or it's hard to visualize the rotation to get this state. So this is kind of the limitation. Uh, I can answer this question. Um, you know, that was posed in this problem. I've, you know, I've been able to find this, you know, the stress state of this inclined plane. I can figure out the principal stress state, but it's kind of hard for me to look at those rotations and visualize that and plug it in and solve this problem. Um, so instead, next time, we're going to look at uh, kind of the more circle approach to how to visualize this problem and kind of get these exact same answers. So we'll do that next time. Then we'll look at the linear algebra approach as well. I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.